Some animals are really strange looking, some you'd even say are ugly. But if you look past the scales, the slime, and even the legs, you're sure to find the beauty. All creatures, great and small, are unique. And they all deserve to be here on this planet, just like me and you. We've always had these weird double standards when it comes to animals. On the one hand, we'll build these elaborate homes for hamsters. And on the other hand, we'll poison rats without a second thought. When it comes to animals we hate the most, insects generally top the charts. But there's plenty of mammals we can't stand either. Some animals we hate because they damage our property and invade all our spaces. Some we hate because they're predatory and that makes us feel threatened. And some we hate because of their transmission of diseases. But why? Why do we hate these animals so much? Is it fair? Hi everyone, my name's Abby and welcome to another episode of Animal Educate. Today we're going to look at some of the world's most hated animals. They've got long dark muzzles and bristly black tails and their ears are like a cross between a teddy bear and an elf. You could mistake them for an exotic looking dog, but actually they're more related to cats. They're strange looking half dog, half cat creatures. Ironically, part of the human dislike of hyenas actually stems from the fact that they're just so fascinating and that we just find them really weird. What are you looking at? And that makes us feel uncomfortable. Hyenas are successful hunters, but they're also proficient scavengers. They feed on corpses of animals they find, but they also kill up to 95% of the food they eat. In fact, Hyenas, not lions, are the most formidable predators in Africa. Lions actually steal food from hyenas more often than the other way round. They have a series of calls that range from whoops to cackles and high-pitched sounds. And each call means something different. The hyena is known for its menacing laugh. And this is the sound that indicates anxiety and serves to beckon the rest of the clan to the sight of the carcass. They're not just cunning hunters, they're useful scavengers. These bone crushers will clean up the site of a kill, getting rid of all discarded bones and debris. They prevent the spread of disease and they keep animal populations in check as part of the predatory chain. Visitors certainly don't flock to Africa to visit hyenas. Even Disney has portrayed the hyena as a cowardly, stinking thief. <laughs> Shut up! Even Hemingway, a lover of all things Africa, except hyenas, labelled them hermaphroditic, self-eating devourer of the dead. There's plenty of literature out there claiming hyenas are the reincarnation of the devil and the undead. These guys need some positive reinforcement, pronto. They need rebranding. We should love hyenas. The Howl of the Coyote is America's original national anthem and a totemic animal in Native American mythology. The coyote has lived in America for more than a million years. But since the early 19th century, they've been subject to a war of extermination by ranchers and government agencies. Even today, some 500,000 coyotes are killed annually. Coyotes are actually really smart and there's evidence that they look both ways before they cross the road. They use their intelligence to hunt and their diet mainly consists of rodents and rabbits which helps keep those populations in check as well. These guys actually look a lot like dogs and they're also known to look a lot like red wolves which are a critically endangered species. Because they look a lot like dogs and because they are rather cute they do score votes in this area, but that doesn't overcome the hatred. People hate coyotes for many different reasons. One being they think they carry rabies, but it's also their diet, which we have a problem with. They've been known to eat domesticated animals before, including pets and animals that are bred for food, which the media is quick to document. But wait a second, 
haven't we moved into their habitat? When you look at it that way, you think, actually, surely they're just trying to survive. It's not like they're going out of their way to be a menace to society. Aren't they just trying to find food in the easiest way possible? We've encroached on so much of the land. We're bound to come into conflict with these animals. Is that their problem or ours? We make it their problem. Research has shown that where coyotes exist, there's a better balance in nature. They play an integral role in the environment by helping to maintain species diversity. One way they do this is by helping to regulate mid-sized carnivore animals like foxes and skunks and raccoons. They also keep rats and other rodent populations down. So they actually probably save crop farmers a lot more money than they realize. We should love coyotes. They begin their lives as wriggling aquatic larvae. They breed really, really well even in the filthiest of water bodies, surviving on bacteria alone before they take to wing. Insects like mosquitoes and ticks can really get under your skin, and with good reason. These guys can carry diseases, and yes, we do have to take precautions to avoid bites, but it's really important to acknowledge that they also play a really helpful role in the ecosystem. Ticks, mosquitoes, and many other insects these blood drinkers are one of the most abundant sources of nourishment for a staggering amount of species in nearly every corner of the globe. As links in the food chain go, mosquitoes may rank among the world's most necessary insects. Many also serve as pollinators, transferring pollen to fertilise plants. It's hardly their fault that deadly microorganisms are hitching rides in their saliva so if you've ever wondered why Mother Nature keeps them around, now you know. We should love ticks and mosquitoes. Rats are one of the most hated animals ever. Many people hate the sight of their tails. Actually, many people just can't stand the sight of them full stop. The fear is particularly founded in history and the association with disease and generally just seen as filthy animals. Keep the change, you filthy animal. They're believed to have come on ships in the 17th century and they've bred abundantly ever since. They can transmit dangerous diseases such as the Black Plague, although there isn't any scientific basis to assume that rats are exceptionally disease-prone animals. Rats appeared responsible for the plague because they were so abundant. Rats are really wonderful animals. If you've never learnt about them, you should at least give them a chance. They're really social creatures. These guys have also been subject to a lot of medical research globally, and still are today, which means they're still suffering. Rats can be a problem, but they're merely acting as any wild animal does. They just want to survive. According to the Center of Disease Control, rats don't even spread rabies. So despite their staggering numbers, you're least likely to get sick from a rat. And they do serve a purpose in the ecosystem. They're scavengers and they're opportunistic eaters. They'll eat garbage and other things that you throw away. And they're also really important as part of the predatory ecosystem. We should love rats. At over a million years old, these guys have learned how to survive through the generations. Cockroaches have many different varieties and they can look very different. They can survive without water for long periods of time and food. They're absolutely fascinating creatures. The thing about cockroaches is they are known to spend time in your kitchen. You know what I'm talking about, you f cockroach. I mean, let's face it, most people would rather see a ghost than a cockroach in the cupboard. <coughs> Roaches are very resilient and they can survive in inhospitable environments, but they're specifically adapted to share the nests with larger mammals. This gives them access to a continuous stream of food scraps, mold, mildew, and even eggs of more dangerous insects such as fleas, bed bugs, or lice. For most of the animal kingdom, this is still a pretty good deal. But back in the day, humans decided we 
we could look after ourselves. Are they really that filthy? Well, actually, testing has shown that it's not that easy for germs to stick to them. We know that cockroaches aren't very dangerous, but most people don't like the look of them. They can't tolerate those weird, bulbous, ripped bodies. But they're major players in the process of decomposition. They're also primary predators of bollworm and armyworm. These are two of the most destructive of cotton, soybean, corn, cabbage and tomato crops in the United States and Africa. So again, they help to keep populations in check. They create balance. We should love cockroaches. So picture it, we've all been there, haven't we? We're just setting out our lovely picnic. We've got our food, we've got our juice, we're damn hungry. And then we hear it, that dreaded buzz, and we know the wasps have come to claim their share. It's buzzing around your head, bearing its stinger. So you freak out, everyone freaks out, you jump, you scream, hell, you even dance. Most people don't like wasps. And you could say there's good reason not to like them. You view them as the enemy and not some unknowing wild beastie. They can sting us. They can pump their venom into us. And yes, it hurts. It hurts a lot. And they don't have the same rosy reputation as the yeah. honeybee or the bumblebee. They're also known for condemning other insects to the slowest, most grotesque deaths in the natural world. The thing is, the world would be worse off without them. No predatory arthropods are geared towards grand-scale pest control as wasps. And they act as great pollinators. Yes, just like bees, they also help to pollinate the world. So how about giving them a break? How about let's save the wasps? We should love wasps. Spiders. Probably the most common phobia of all time is arachnophobia. They have the ability to make people run and scream. They have the ability to make us avoid a room until that spid has left the building, even when they're really, really tiny. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there that think spiders or most spiders are poisonous. This is so wrong. Most spiders aren't poisonous. They just eat bugs. That's literally all they do. But they're mainly hated because of how strange they look. Is their legs right? Or maybe it's their eyes that get you. Spiders shouldn't be hated for so many reasons. While people may have their apprehensions, it's important that we coexist with them because they really benefit our environment, primarily by keeping insect populations under control. They control insect populations everywhere outside, including forests, prairies, farmland, and near water. And they do the same indoors, eating ants, flies, cockroaches and more. If you can get past the leg thing or the eye thing, watch them, whether that's online or if you're brave enough in real life, just watch them, watch them move. Just watch them in awe instead of fear. They are incredible creatures. We should love spiders. Raccoons have earned the nickname trash pandas because they like getting into our rubbish and our garbage cans. This causes headaches for homeowners in suburban and urban areas. They're also disliked by farmers, both for feeding on chickens or ducks and their eggs or damaging corn plants. They're opportunistic eaters, so will literally eat anything. From bird feeders, from ponds. They don't seem to be that fussy, although they are known to wash their food before they eat it. That doesn't mean they'll clean up after themselves and they are known to be very messy animals. So most people that dislike raccoons, they dislike them because they inconvenience them. But their scavenger-like diet actually benefits the environment. Because they'll feast on what's convenient, they keep our environment clean by eating lots of carrion or dead animals. They also eat a lot of other animals, including snakes and lizards, and even rats which again helps to keep populations in check. Raccoons are very intelligent creatures and they have thumbs like us. This is part of the reason why they're such a menace to us because of what they're capable of with their thumbs. Raccoons are pretty damn cute too, so they do score some votes here. There's plenty of footage and photos that promote this little cutie. Because we've encroached on their habitat, we end up 
sharing environments, we're obviously going to come into that conflict. Unfortunately, that conflict perpetrates hate. We should love raccoons. Snakes are one of the most feared creatures globally. Like spiders, they're one of the top phobias. Some people will scream if they see one, others, they'll just shrug and move on. And unfortunately, they're pretty popular in the exotic pet department. Snakes, again, like most animals on the list, have a bad reputation in myths. The snake's digestion plays a big part in our fear. The process is pretty hideous for us to comprehend. But it's nature, and nature is brutal as much as it's kind. They also look strange. They have fangs. This alone is going to raise your heart rate. They're feared for their fatal bite and their, as we perceive, their soulless eyes. But again, the media has blackened the rep of this animal. For the most part, they work to stay out of sight. Unlike some animals, such as raccoons and coyotes, that grow accustomed to being near humans, snakes prefer to remain unseen by people. Snakes are fascinating. They're a huge part of the ecosystem. They control the rat populations. They serve an important purpose as a predator. In addition to mice and rats, they also eat frogs, toads and other reptiles, birds, termites and other insects. Snakes are beautiful creatures. Their colours and patterns alone are just the most beautiful on earth. They're amazing to watch. Check them out. Not them hunting, although this serves to be highly entertaining to some people, but just watching them move. We should love snakes. Many people are terrified of bats. They're freaked out by their appearance or their screech. Loads of scary movies feature bats. You'll find fake bats in nearly every single haunted house that's ever existed. And they're reinforced at Halloween when everything comes out from the dark. Vampires, zombies, monsters and bats. And actually, if you think about it, there's certain characteristics of bats that can trigger our primal fear response. They're creatures of the night. They're stealthy. They live in caves. And most people associate them with vampires. They rarely bite humans, and actually they prefer insects to blood. They get a bad reputation as disease carriers, and they do in fact carry diseases, just like most animals do, but it's important to have a little perspective here. Bats flying at night pose no risk to humans. In addition, they help us out in a big way every night when they come out to feast. Bats are insectivores, keeping the population under control. They also act as plant pollinators and natural fertilizer producers. Bats have actually helped society a lot. They use a technique called echolocation, which is the basis for modern radar today. We should love bats. Okay, let's wrap this up. Let's look at some of the common traits or behavior that makes us hate these animals so much. How they look, how they eat, and how they hunt. But most of all, it's how they inconvenience us. They eat our food, they invade our spaces, they cost us money, they create a mess that we have to clean up. Basically, they get in our way. But think about it. These animals are wild. They've been forced into these nuisance behaviors because their habitats decreased and their food supplies changed. Humans have disrupted the natural balance of life. Our behavior determines their behavior. In fact, it's only fair. Let's take a long, hard look at humans. The most hated animal? What about us? Humanity is the most violent, evil, abusive animal on planet Earth. Most animals only attack or kill for survival. It's rare they'll kill their own kind. And humans, we kill for fun. We kill for sport. We kill for difference. We kill more than 150 billion animals for food every single year. The negative press affects the public opinion about certain animals. 
and it's often driven by groups or societies that are impacted financially. For example, anti-predator hype from livestock interest groups and some hunting groups. They base their own view of these animals from traditional thinking and not science. Science has revealed time and time again that these animals are not at all what they're pictured to be. Just because we don't understand or we fear nature, that doesn't mean that we should hate, dismiss or kill. So before you decide to hate on animals, just stop. Think about them as wild animals and what their purpose might be. That they haven't actually done anything wrong. They are purely acting on a survival basis. It doesn't mean you have to go and find the nearest spider and let it crawl all over your face. We just need to learn. The best way to overcome any fear or phobia is to learn about that object of fear and face it. Understand it, understand where that fear comes from. Be objective. Start spreading good information. No fear, no hate, just educate. Thanks for watching today guys, I really hope you've enjoyed the video. As usual, please comment below. If you've enjoyed the video, please give us a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time.